Check this out. Look at his face here. Poor Romero. What is he looking at? I'm about to show you exactly what he's looking at. But what he's looking at, it worries him. And it's why Arsenal won this North London derby. A intense, confusing game that I want to get your thoughts on. And there's lots for us to talk about. I want to talk about the setup. I want to talk about the set pieces. I want to talk about Vicario. I want to talk about Arsenal actually being quite humble in how they played this game. Really humble, actually. And it was that humility that got them the three points. And for Spurs, what needs to change for them to not be 3-0 down at half time? Is it something they can even change? Well, let's start off with the tactics because I think what's really interesting here is like a lot of people will see the game, they'll see the starting lineups and they go, that was it. I'm going to show you that that's not the game, like at all. Now there are little pairings here and I think those pairings are something to maybe focus on, one of which will be Davies and Saka. And of course, you've got Poro and Trossard. You've got Tomiyasu and Kulisewski. You know, there's partnerships all around the pitch that, you know, people are going to have to sort of deal with their battles, right? But the game was so, so different to that. So, so different to that. The other thing I'm going to talk to you about is this. And I wonder if you guys can figure it out from that. What do you think I'm talking about? Because that is why Arsenal are still in this title race. And that is why the squad recruitment here from Arteta is absolutely phenomenal. And that is why Arsenal are still knocking around and winning games. Let's get into it because I think, look, you've got the setups there, two teams, and one where I'll show you the, the stats at the end of the game as well because it's one where Tottenham had, had the stats, right? But did they deserve to win the game? Let me know in the comments down below. So much to talk about in this one. Let's start off with the goals because this is the first goal because actually i said to myself i wrote down see it there first 15 minutes first 15 minutes is where we're going to find out how this game is going to be played and tottenham looked pretty solid arsenal started to slowly get a bit of a footing and then bang on 15 minutes was actually the answer to the game and the answer to how arsenal won this game against spurs because it came down to set pieces and the way that they do set pieces is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And what I started to do is I wanted to kind of look into the stats and think, like, what's going on here? Because a lot of people have sort of had a go at um, Vicario in particular. So first of all, Vicario's stats. In terms of the two set pieces, and we'll show you the, them themselves, right? In terms of those two set pieces, Vicario is 16th. I've gone on the wrong person here, but let me show you. This is on Stathead, by the way. There's a link in the description if you want 20% off. So this is for stopped crosses, successfully stopped crosses. Vicario, and there's his talking point, so this is one for the comments, Tottenham fans. How are you feeling about Vicario? Because he is 16th out of the goalies this season in terms of coming for, for crosses and, and taking them. And interestingly, David Rea is in top spot. But why is that? I think one thing is he doesn't fill me with confidence for Curry. And I think he's maybe having a season that's difficult from that point of view. But when we dug deeper into the stats of it, what was really interesting was the other side of it when it comes to Arsenal. Because first of all, Arsenal, in terms of um, scoring from set pieces, they've got the best per 90 this season. And actually, on, on one of the stats, which goes back to 2018, they are the best team at set pieces in that whole time. What's that? Six, seven, eight years. But this is fascinating. We started to get into the weeds here because the first goal, actually, let's go here. So the first goal, they get a corner. Declan Rice works up a bit higher up the pitch, but Arsenal obviously playing in transition. And the cross comes in to this area here. And look how many Arsenal players are in that area of the pitch. Hoiberg, of course, is the one who gets sort of nudged by Tommy Yasu and Hoiberg scores an own goal. I think actually the second one for me is more revealing. And the, the point I made about, let's have a look, it's this side, isn't it? This is the one where Romero is exactly what I'm talking about here, right? Let's go see him. He's looking and he's thinking, oh, S-H-I-T. And the reason he's doing that is because this Arsenal side, and coming back to the tactics point thing, all these players here, over six foot, 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 over six foot. And what's really interesting here, in terms of, say, a, an overload, to turn that into sort of like a transformer, right? Do you know what I mean? Like its own 
entity. Because if you look at the two teams, again, go back to this, right? You look at the two teams, in terms of people over six foot, for, and if you match it up, right? So Ben White up against Davies, let's say. Ben White, taller. The centre-back's about the same, right? Okay? But if we take them off, in terms of these matchups, right? So Ben White's going to win that one, you would imagine, or, or has a good chance to. And then in midfield, Partey and Rice. Now, I know Rice takes a lot of them. But to have Tomiyasu up against Poro, in terms of overall matchups, individually, you can have different players that can sort of help. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one there. But when you then turn that, turn all these players into one sort of machine, if you know what I mean, one transformer, and put the ball in the right area, you're going to hurt the opposition. So that's going to make life a lot harder for, for Vicario, I think. It's bound to. And, and we see it here. But then the other thing I was wondering was, is there something else that Arsenal do that's different to the rest? Because I think actually, when we looked at it, and again, on Stathead, this is amazing. Again, please, if you want to take your content to the next level, we are so thrilled to be supported by them this year. Because what was really interesting is we were able to just get deeper and deeper into the stats here. So in terms of corner kicks in total, right, you can see Liverpool have had the most corner kicks, Arsenal third most. But what we were able to then look at was in terms of goals from um, dead passes, dead passes, dead balls, <laughs> um, who's had the most there? Arsenal, 15, okay? Bournemouth are in 18th with three. Let me highlight them here. What's interesting, though, is that, because I was thinking, is it about in-swinging corners or out-swinging corners? If we look at in-swinging corners, Arsenal, of their 238, they've had 192 in-swinging corners, right? And I thought, oh, wow, they've had one out-swinging corner, Arsenal down here at the bottom, the whole season long. One. Obviously, some short corners within that as well. And then we've got straight corners here. But there's so many of them are in-swinging. Yes. But so are Bournemouth's. 180 of theirs. So as much as it's about those in-swinging corners, it comes back to something different. And this is the reason why Arsenal will continue to hang in there. Because when we're talking about the first 15 minutes of a game and control and the crowd and all those things. That is one thing. And I think we all feel that like Arsenal are just a touch short in some areas when it comes to open play. They are so good when it comes to those set pieces that that gives them a chance. And of course, two goals come from set pieces. And when you, and when you put all those six foot guys together, seven players within the Arsenal team and put them all together and then move them along, then you've got something. Because from this first goal, you've got them all together. They all get to have a run to the same area. And it's an overload of sorts. And it's, it's not unstoppable, but if you get, you get the right, um, right um, corner coming in, you've just got to utilise the fact that you've got all these guys that are bigger than the rest and you've got a chance. Now, how are you supposed to be elite overall? You've got to be able to play well defensively as well. And as you can see here, as it progresses, they're all here. It's, the ball gets put into a decent area and you just need someone to get on it. And importantly, something that people won't focus on, Ben White on Vicario. So for Vicario to come out and win that is very, very difficult. And when we're talking about David Ray on the other side of it, David Ray is able to come and get these corners for the exact same reasons. Because when that cross comes in, the size of this Arsenal team defensively means that no one's really going to get a run onto a cross apart from David Rea because Saliba or White or Tomiyasu or Gabriel or Partey or Rice are just all big lads who are going to be able to be physical enough to stop the opposition. And I thought, I think that's something that is so clever from Arteta that you've got a team that's good enough to beat teams. But in games like this, I thought he was really, really humble in his tactics because what he could have done, and Flav said this earlier in the week, he said, the thing I like about this game for Tottenham is that they're going to come and have a go. We're going to have a go. And that will allow space for for them. It's not what Arteta did. Arteta was humble. He left his ego at the door. And although this was the sort of general idea that when you've got these, um, you know, when you've got the two teams set up, this is what it actually looked like. And it was it was a team that played very, very compact and narrow. And that comes from having defenders that are willing to put the hard work in, which Ben White does or Tommy Asu does at times, but also not getting drawn. The amount of times every single player was in this narrow, narrow area of the pitch. So often, 
everyone was was here. And it showed, I think it showed a humility and a nous about just getting the win, right? And and it really, really hurt. It really, really stopped Tottenham in their tracks because you've got the first goal and the third goal that comes from those set pieces. But the second goal, the second goal is really, really interesting because if you think of that setup, where there was space and there is always going to be space up against Tottenham is in these areas here. I've got to say, look, Ben Davies, we'll talk about the penalty a little bit later on. But Ben Davies for the second goal does not help himself. It's I, li I like him. We all want to like him. But he's defending for the second goal. I don't understand what he's doing. Again, let me know in the comments down below. And talk to me about the Vicario thing. I'm intrigued about that. And intrigued for Arsenal fans. This dominance when it comes to set pieces, do you feel like that's enough to get you over the line? Because I think it really helps with the game state. You know, if you're in the lead, you've then got to control the game. And obviously there was a couple of mistakes that, that came, but overall, hung in there, didn't you? You did hang in there. I, think that's, I still kind of wonder. I do wonder. This was the second goal that I thought was... It was on Ben Davies. Really, really was on Ben Davies. Because, again, so many players... So many players are in that sort of central area of the pitch, as you can see here. And as we move it along... And of course, you've got the penalty shout with Kulisevsky. Again, let me know in the comments down below. I, I, to be honest, I've, I've seen it once or twice. Not, I'm still a little bit not certain on it. Declan Rice does well. But again, four bodies around Madison in that area of the pitch. And I think there was a problem as well for Tottenham in terms of the recruitment that they've got to make in the summer. Because I think the midfielders, there's a bit of a problem here. Let's talk about the goal first of all. Because they get the ball here. Let's go the other way. They win the ball here. And then they know exactly what we're talking about. First of all, Saka plays a pass out here. But we know where the spaces are. The spaces are going to be here. Oh, I can't do it here. Hang on. The spaces are going to be here and here. And Ben Davies should know that. He's got to be better there. And actually, I don't know if I can zoom in and you can see it. Hoiber, he has a look. He looks at Saka and he knows. This is the moment when he knew they were in trouble. Because he has that look and Saka just has so much space out there. And that for me is on Ben Davies. I don't know what Ben Davies is trying to do. And maybe it's a, you know, it's a philosophy thing that we you know, generally want to go to the ball and press the ball. That's how Ange's teams play. But he has to look. He has to look at Saka. And then he has to get back here in line. Because you know that pass is coming. You know there's that space there. And he, he left himself in a horrible, horrible position. And what that led to was what felt like a really easy finish for Saka. But I think as everything, every single person in the stadium knew that he was going to cut in and put it in that corner. But Ben Davies, because he's scurrying across by this point, it makes it easier for Saka to chop the other way and get himself that goal. That's really, really disappointing defending from Ben Davies. Now, he does make it up with the penalty. And again, in terms of... I've said this a few times. What Postacoglu has said on numerous occasions is about don't look at the scoreline, just play the game. And I thought they continued and continued... And got, there, got back into it due to a David Rea mistake, obviously. But they did hang in there. But one thing that Arsenal did, once again, when we're talking about the ego and staying, you know, not getting dragged into the game that Tottenham wanted, which was, you know, that ding-dong affair, which I think sort of happened as the game progressed, was that they, they did not allow Tottenham through the middle of the pitch. And in the first half of the game, I thought they were absolutely excellent at it. And this is what they generally look to do. And you can see this here, that, you know, with the players. This is four minutes in. We noticed it pretty early. Narrow, narrow, um, super narrow, super narrow. And essentially, really, actually, that's actually a diamond, really, isn't it? Defensively out of position with a front, the front two there. And when we talk about the Tottenham recruitment in terms of dealing with this, and more importantly, dealing with a low block, because I've heard Tottenham fans talk about this, and this is the problem for Tottenham fans, is that they can't seem to break down the opposition. They had 72% possession in the first half, which Arsenal allowed them it. And it's one to do with, I think, the size of the team and how they work as a as an whole collective. They're so well drilled, and that's completely for Arteta. But I also thought there was difficulty here for Tottenham, because as the game progressed, the, the pass was always out wide. It was never through the middle. And that meant that, you had to have underlapping runs a lot of the time. Uh, Poro's obviously going to come into central areas. You're going to get the same from Ben Davies. And I think those two eights in, well, I guess eights double pivot in Hoiberg and Ben Tanker, there was a problem there because he wasn't really able to get on the ball here. But generally, the ball that was allowed was the ball to Kulisevsky out wide or the ball to Brennan Johnson out wide. And that's that worked for Arsenal. But to then get in behind this Arsenal team, you had to have runners 
from those midfielders. And I'll show you this just quickly. This is Hoiberg, I think. Yeah, Hoiberg, you can see he's actually sort of, for a centre midfielder who's kind of supposed to be sitting, he's actually made quite a few runs into those channels. And so if we come back, should be able to see it here. Exactly a problem that needs resolving as the game progresses. So this is on this is one occasion when Ben Tenkor is plays that underlapping run. He's not that profile. He's not going to want to dribble with the ball. He's always going to come back. And that works for this Arsenal team because again, size, 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 size. They're comfortable. They're comfortable defending their own box. But you've got to have the right players out in those areas. And that is a problem for Tottenham. I don't think they've totally figured that out yet. And I think the summer recruitment, getting the right kind of players would make a difference. Another great example. The ball has been able to be played to Kulisevsky. But Kulisevsky then has to play a run to a win willing runner in Hoiber. But he's, he's in a great space here. He's in a really great space. And actually, you want someone with a bit more drive to go and run with the ball. He's never going to do that. He's not that kind of player. Same thing happens here, this time on the other side. Brennan Johnson gets the ball. It's Ben Tanker this time making that underlapping run. Thomas Partey comes with him. I think the ball runs out of play and the ball runs out of play because he's just not comfortable as a dribbler there. That's why players like Goodmanson, who's at Genoa, I think would be great for Tottenham. Eb um, Eze, I know I talk about him a lot, but he would be fantastic in this. And that is one thing that Arsenal have got to solve. They've got to be able to beat a low block. And, and Arteta knew that. And he did that in the first half. He did that consistently. And this is such a great example on 43 minutes. Look at that. And this actually comes from Romero. Actually, he's kind of dribbles literally into this space. And then they have to come back out and then they have to go wide. And look, being this compact, people say it's parking the bus and that's fine. But actually, you know, it's just ensuring that teams do not go through the middle. You go round the side. And Ben White's, you know, smart enough to get out there and be ready. But they have consistently... In the big games against good teams, they have gone, OK, beat us with crosses or beat us with a different kind of quality. Or it's going to have to be a mistake from us for you to beat us. And that is, it's not what champions do, but it's what a very good team does. I mean, to have pretty much every player within that area of the pitch, that's incredible. That's absolutely incredible. And you get yourself in trouble if the ball goes out wide and you can beat him. But that doesn't really happen with Arsenal because they've got really, you know, there's such a diligent team. And then these aren't sexy words, like I get that. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it can be the difference between winning games and losing games a lot of the time. Final thing I wanted to touch on, of course, is the goals and how Tottenham got back into it. And, and I come back to that philosophy, but mistakes as well. And Romero, just the attitude of Romero, I think he deserves huge credit in this game. Because this is, I mean, this is a bad pass from him. But he then carries on and his attitude is superb. And his attitude throughout the game, despite being 3-0 down, was superb. Could have got a goal in the first half. But if we move it on, well, that's the penalty, isn't it? Let's go here. But here, all of a sudden, I'm like, when the goal went in, I watched it back. I was like, what's he doing there? But that's an attitude, isn't it? And, and Raya, I mean, I don't know what he's trying to do. There's actually a pass over to Gabriel. So, so simple. But instead, he tries to play this weird little pass to Thomas Partey. Little chipped pass. And he goes to Romero and he gives them a chance. And, you know, for both goals, it was about there was an, an attitude that gave them the goal to a point because they kept going. They stayed positive, And the Ben Davies one is him staying in the box, obviously, from a short corner and, and getting there ahead of them. And they had solid chances. And last place I'm going to go, I think, is to the stats, because I think it's important um, and it says a lot, but it doesn't say enough. And I need you to get involved in the comments here because. Tottenham, 2.37 expected goals, 1.08 for Arsenal. But as we've spoken about, all those sort of unsexy things and good coaching and all those bits and bobs, that is what is keeping Arsenal in this title race right now. Um, and I mean, that, that has to be a compliment. Like it doesn't go, it's nothing worse than that because it allows David Rea to be a better goalkeeper. It allows the back four to stay, into, stay in games. And when you're not really breaking down a team with real quality in transition, you're doing it. Or with those set pieces, you're giving yourself a lead and then you're extending your lead from that. You know, it's not cheating in any way. It's like it's getting the best out of the percentages that you've got. And that could just about give Arsenal a chance to, to keep going and, and getting kind of almost cheap goals and cheap points by being smart with the recruitment that you've brought in there, but also going and getting the goals as well. They deserve huge credit for that. It was that, you know, they're not a nice team to play against. And, uh, and although Tottenham gave it a good go, I think they've got to make, They've got to get the right profile of players in those eights. I think there needs to be some changes there. Players like Van der Ven and, and Romero, so great. 
Um, you saw Van der Ven with the speed that he's got. Absolutely fantastic when you make it a game like that. But when they take on a team with a low block and Arsenal didn't come and give them the game that they wanted, in the first half, they left themselves vulnerable at times and didn't have the right profiles for the right players. But, you know, the stats are there and look great, right? Especially the first half. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, they scored, they were 3-0 down with 72% possession. I know it doesn't all matter about um, possession. Like, I get that, right? But the point is, if you've got 72% possession, should you be conceding three goals? No. So why is that? I think we've explained exactly why that is. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. Go check out all the other videos on the channel. And I'll speak to you guys soon. Cheers.